Welcome and hello. Let's talk the news, and today is June 26, 2024. Julian Assange entered a plea deal today with the United States so that he could return home to Australia after his long stay in the UK. How does any of this make any sense? Julian Assange was the founder of WikiLeaks that way back in 2007 released information regarding the Iraq War, Afghanistan cables, in the 2001 attack on the World Trade Center, an infamous video showing a U.S. helicopter killing 11 people in Baghdad, amongst them two Reuters journalists. This, the United States called a breach of U.S. national security and sought his extradition from London, where he claimed asylum at the Ecuadorian embassy there. Confused yet? In 2019, he lost his asylum and then was arrested by British police, whom was keeping him as he fought the extradition request that was still in effect from the United States and today finally marks the end of that when the U.S. officially stops going after him because of this plea deal. He can finally return to his family and friends in Australia. If this whole debacle says one thing, it says, if you release information about the U.S. military to the public, run. Run hard. Run fast. Two prominent figures have released damning information about the U.S. in the past few decades, and both had to run off to other countries to avoid internal conflict. Maybe tomorrow, Snowden will get a shot at going to Australia as well, huh? To qualify for the plea deal, Assange needs to comply with destroying the information he shared. Which also shows that the United States doesn't, still doesn't quite know how the internet or computers work. Julian Assange's story does make it questionable if free speech and transparency also only go so far as some critics might suggest, chilling the willingness of journalists to speak out against the government. And others think that this was the proper response for sharing national security and that WikiLeaks wasn't the venue to do it in. What do you think? Guess what? The unexpected! Kidding, time for more Netanyahu and how he keeps screwing up things for Israel. The Israeli military needs more people as pressure grows to stop just leveling Gaza into concrete dust, so the Prime Minister, in a curveball move, decided to remove the protections for ultra-Orthodox Jews and required them to be drafted as well. This allows Netanyahu to pull from another 13% of the Israeli population, or about 1.3 million citizens. And using collective punishment tactics as his, on his own people has said that any religious school that does not comply offering up their men like a modern day Hunger Games, well, they'll lose funding. I'm sure this will be popular in the upcoming allegedly free and fair elections that Netanyahu somehow keeps on winning year after year after year. In other dangerous ideas, China decided to go to the far side of the moon. They didn't realize that on that side of the moon was where all the aliens were. And after they had their memories altered, they came back with shirts on that said, I went to the far side of the moon and all I got were these lousy rocks. That's right, China collected rocks from the side of the moon we don't really see. It's tough to get there because communication signals don't travel through solid rock very well. Surprise, surprise, because they don't travel through cardboard very well. And so they used a satellite-like relay system to accomplish that. Otherwise, the rocks don't have all the volcanic deposits the close side of the moon has from the early days of Earth-Moon relations. The international science community hopes to learn more about these geochemically distinct rocks that China has brought back, assuming the alien slugs allow them to share the information. Speaking about other governments solving problems we can't seem to in the United States, what mass shootings happened yesterday? Huzzah! No mass shootings were reported on the gun violence archive for yesterday. Thank the gods. Maybe all those people with guns were deported to Australia to go after one Julian Assange before he can get to his laptop. And let's end on a controversial topic. On an airplane, the person in the middle seat of a row does deserve both armrests. Here's my argument. They do not get to participate in the wonderment of looking out the window the entire time. They are forced to see both people's movies at the same time as their own. And they don't get high priority when after eating plain food, they need to dash off to the bathroom. No, the person in the middle is basically suffering a war crime. So yes, they deserve both armrests. What do you think and why?